The new Apple MacBook, MacBook Pro, and Pro Max are going to be absolutely beastly when it comes to performance and productivity. Take a look at the tech specs, numbers so big that mathematicians will be biting their lip with processing power. Yeah, there's not much that these MacBooks won't do. Except gaming. You, you want to play games on this thing? Like video games? It's still an Apple product. She's an absolute technological powerhouse, just not for gaming. Alrighty, stallions and stallionettes, welcome to the Gamer Heaven. I am your host, AK40 Kevin. Sharing my screen over here, I do have an article pulled up. This will be cited or sourced in the description below, as I do anytime I cover any news in the gaming community or industry. Apple has just revealed this brand new redesigned lineup or series of MacBook laptops, and it is still using M1 silicon chips that Apple does make, rather than sourcing Intel or any other third-party chip from external sources. The biggest and most notable changes to performance and day-to-day -day usage would be with that CPU. So what about them tech specs that you mentioned there, Kevin? Well, the M1 Pro and Pro Max have 10 core CPUs or central processing units, with the Pro sporting a 16 core GPU or graphics processing unit, and the Max, well, double that, 32. And that GPU is not a separate physical component like you would see in something like a Windows 10 PC build that is actually integrated in the same piece of silicon, the same block of gaming goodness there, which is the M1 series chips, which are basically an SOC or system on a chip. Think of it like the APU in a console. Allow for increased performance and better energy efficiency, and on top of the the increased core count, which by the way, those are some good numbers we're seeing here. Apple's new chips also have the benefit of being able to share up to 32 gigabytes on the Pro or 64 gigabytes on the M1 Max of unified memory between its CPU and GPU, something that allows for speedy memory bandwidths of up to 200 gigabytes per second or 400 gigabytes a second on the Max. If you're not acquainted with Mac computers or Apple products, you'll be like, what the hell is unified memory? RAM, random access memory, that's basically what it is. So basically 32 and 64 gigabytes of RAM with speeds of two and 400 gigabytes respectively between the Pro and the Max. And this right here is a huge benefit or pro of using an Apple MacBook compared to something like a Windows 10 laptop, trust me. Apple says the performance of its new MacBook Pros doesn't take a hit when running solely on battery, so you'll get the same blazing performance regardless of where you are. So I recently got my hands on a MacBook Pro over here. I also have some matching savagely overpriced AirPod Maxes over here that have yet to be unboxed and reviewed. So there's some Mac products sitting here in the gamer heaven right now to be unboxed and tested in the near future. I will say, from using this MacBook Pro for the last two weeks for productivity and whatnot, I've really enjoyed it. And the impressive thing is that you can be completely untethered, unplugged, and just on battery power. And you're gonna get the same render times in DaVinci when you're editing a video. You're gonna get the same uh, game performance, which you can run certain games on a Mac. For example, Fortnite is fully supported for the new M1 chips. And you're gonna get the same performance. As where I've owned several Windows laptops, even gaming laptops over the last decade or so, and it, it's a completely different machine. When you're not plugged into external power, it, 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 yeah, good luck. Take a little sip of water here, wet my whistle, wet my beak. Recommend you guys do the same. So I'm gonna read this paragraph here. There are some astronomically high numbers here. Every time Apple introduces a new series or generation of products, whether it's their phones, whether it's their tablets, whether it's a baked potato with a chip on board, it doesn't matter what it is. It can be a new watch. It can be a new uh, pair of smart glasses. They always have some insanely high numbers of how much quicker or better it is than the previous generation. And I will say they tend to actually make good on those promises, those astronomically high numbers. It kind of just makes it not as surprising or overwhelming when we see these huge upgrade numbers, considering it's kind of the norm now for Apple. Like every generation is such a substantial leap over the previous. When compared to the latest eight core PC laptop chip, that is the M1 chip that is currently inside of the MacBook Air and the MacBook Pro, Apple says the M1 Pro provides 1.7 times the CPU performance. So that's almost double at the same power level while using 70% less power, which by the way, holy mother of God. Currently on the MacBook Air, it's 15 hours of battery life and 17 on the MacBook Pro. Although in certain uses, scenarios it'll actually be more than that it's very very good basically i've only had to charge this thing i want to say twice in the two and a half weeks that i've been using it and the m1 pro's gpu is up to seven times faster than the same eight core pc laptops integrated graphics and delivers more performance using 70 percent less power 
compared to a discrete GPU for PC notebooks. But Apple does this quite frequently. They give these numbers during these major press releases and whatnot, during these media hype events. They give you the best possible scenario. So obviously the numbers that they're showing you, I'm not gonna say that they're misleading or they're inflated, but they definitely do give you the best possible scenario. All those performance claims sound impressive until you dive a little bit deeper into the fine print. The footnote at the bottom of Apple's press release specifies that the 1.7 times better CPU performance is measuring an M1 Pro against an MSI GP66 Leopard, which features a 10th gen Intel chip that's a generation old. Intel's on the 11th generation, China Lake, and is about to be two generations old when Intel introduces Alder Lake laptops, that's gonna be the Intel 12th gen, later this year. When it comes to graphics, the powerful discrete GPU for PC notebooks Apple lists as a comparison model in its footnotes is an NVIDIA 3050 Ti from a Lenovo Legion 5. Now, I'm not trying to throw no shade at the 3050 Ti, but it's not exactly what comes to mind to the back of my skull when I think about powerful, discrete, notebook GPUs. If you're into gaming, you're generally going to look for at least a 3060 or equivalent AMD GPU. So basically Apple's comparing their new M1 Pro to not really the equivalent from the Windows side. No surprise there. But this is what's gonna kick you in the sack. The MacBook Pro Apple is using for its benchmark is a pre-production 16 inch MacBook Pro with an M1 chip, 16 core GPU, and 32 gigs of RAM, which cost around two kidneys, your kid's college fund, and having your wife work the street corner. For a, grand, for a grand total of $3,100 compared to the $1,050 for the Lenovo Legion 5 that they're comparing it to. Bananas to oranges here, Apple. They're literally comparing a $1,000 laptop to a $3,000 laptop. It's not even in the same league. Now, I have no doubt that these new laptops are gonna be an absolute powerhouse when it comes to productivity, whether you're doing video editing or CAD, computer-aided design, etc. However, when it comes to gaming, well, the main issue here is going to be compatibility. Apple is not compatible with any of the popular launchers. And even if there is a version that you can jerry rig to get up and running, it is not going to be optimized very well to where you're actually going to be taking a substantial performance hit, which goes solely against the entire purpose of having an Apple phone or PC is the fact that even though they generally have less powerful hardware, they're optimized in such a way due to their software that it actually brings the performance neck and neck, if not a little bit higher than Windows PCs in certain situations. But very few games are actually compatible with Mac OS or operating systems. So unless you wanna play one of the few games that runs on the M1 Macs, such as World of Warcraft or Fortnite, you're basically out of luck. And also, this is very, very important to know as well, that Boot Camp doesn't work on M1 Mac. So don't even think about trying to install Windows 10 on a new M1 MacBook Pro. In case you guys don't know what Boot Camp is, it is basically a VM or virtual machine that allows you to run other operating systems such as Linux or Windows 7, Vista 10, etc on a Mac computer, on an Apple computer. You could run those on the Intel Macs, but you cannot run those on Apple's actual in-house M1 chips. And then down here, it says the M1 Pro and M1 Mac, Max, Max Books. This is a comp, this is a hard sentence to get through. The M1 Pro and M1 Max MacBook Pros are machines that may be great for building and developing games, but might not actually be great for playing them due to the OS limitations. Mm -hmm, yeah, absolutely. Correct, that is a correct sentence there. Apple PCs, great for productivity. Gaming, no, they're, they're not good for gaming. I have a more in-depth video I made about mm, four or five months ago that will be linked in the description below. I do strongly advise you watch that if you haven't heard my thoughts on this topic because I do break down why Apple PCs generally don't work good as gaming rigs. With Apple's new and more powerful silicon, Developers may be more willing to create games designed for Mac and Mac OS. Highly doubtful. The journalist over there at Gizmodo kind of got the organization of the sentence incorrect. It needs to be flipped there because it's not the developers that have an issue creating games for Mac. It's Apple that has an issue supporting games on their devices. If you look at the lawsuit between Apple and Epic Games, if you look at the way that Apple doesn't play well with any third-party developers, if you look at the way that Apple doesn't like you to take apart their PCs and change out the components to upgrade the RAM, to change any hardware, then you will clearly see that it is not in Apple's business model or in their liking for you to really install things like Steam Launcher and to play a vast library of games. It's not really what they're meant for. So again, it's not that game developers are like, no, we ain't developing it for Mac. It's just that Apple doesn't really want to play well to make games optimized for their OS. 
So I'm absolutely sure that the new M1 Pro and M1 Max are gonna be absolute powerhouses when it comes to productivity, but they just won't be great for gaming. I most likely will be getting an M1 Pro or Max or both in the gamer heaven for a comprehensive test, benchmark, and review. So make sure you subscribe so you catch that when that video is live. If you got value from this video and enjoyed it, liking it will help it to get seen by others. This information will reach into system as well, which in turn helps me grow this channel, and I do greatly appreciate that. Subscribe for more content just like this. I cover news in the gaming community and industry, as well as tutorials helping you get set up streaming and YouTubing and honest gaming peripheral reviews, and I will see you tomorrow because I upload daily. Peace.